Just in case you didn't know, there's a war happening right now with invasive species. And according to hunters, they're the only ones that are gonna be able to save us from them. So hunters have been online calling me out and other vegans out about why they cannot go vegan because they have to deal with invasive species and they can be anything from deer to uh, rodents to wild feral pigs all across the US and, and, and parts of Canada as well. I'm here to talk to you today about only wild pigs. I know that there are all these other species but to make this video a reasonable length we're just going to focus only on feral pigs today. So what is an invasive species? It means an organism that is introduced into a new area which doesn't have natural predators and can have an effect on the environment. Let's find out where feral pigs have come from and what the situation is now. So wild pigs were first brought to North America by Spanish conquistadors and Hernando de Soto in the 1500s. De, de Soto's main purpose for releasing these pigs into the wild was for hunting purposes and for, for sport and for food. So he started off in the, the Florida side, made his way all the way to Texas and was releasing pigs along the way and they started to proliferate into the wild. They also started crossbreeding with other boars and started making all these hybrids in the, on the landscape. So hunters try to argue that there's no way for them to be vegan because they have to hunt and trap them for our personal physical safety. That they're just bloodthirsty invasive species that are bent on, on killing all humans. So when you talk to hunters, they say things like this. And it kind of reminds me of that 1997 sci-fi classic film, Starship Pig Hunters, because that's exactly what the situation is all about. Here, take a look. You smash the entire area, you kill anything that has more than two legs, you get me? We get you, sir! What do you mean? They're dangerous. They've killed over four people in more than 200 years. I don't know. Kill them! Kill them all! Come on! Mission accomplished, son. Thank you for your duty in keeping us safe from invasive species. So let's look at the actual statistics. Between 1825 and 2012, there have been about 100 documented attacks on humans, and only four of them were fatal in the United States. In comparison, there have been 158 bear attacks. Between 1979 and 2017, there were 937 fatal dog attacks. Yet the double standard is that domesticated animals are welcome into the households. They're cherished members of the family, they're given massive amounts of funding, charities, they're given gifts. They also have laws that prevent them from having cruelty done to them. Pigs have no protection from humans. Pigs are just as intelligent as three-year-old children, which also leads to the efficacy of actually hunting them because they understand that humans are a threat, especially once they've been educated. That's a term used when hunters engage them and try to shoot them and they learn that, okay, humans are bad, we need to run away. They become educated, they become weary of seeing humans, so they run the opposite direction, which in turn leads to further spread away from the original site of where the pigs were living. So Alberta and many other jurisdictions have tried the hunting method, and Alberta used to give $50 to any hunter that brought in pig ears with the, the date of kill marked down, and it failed. Because what happens is once they shoot, they run into the woods and they further proliferate. Hunters also argue that they're uh, protecting motorists from all these collisions that are being caused. Once again, let's go to the tapes here. Almost $36 million is the cost of feral pigs in the US economy. And all collisions involving any animal, including wildlife, is over 8 billion US. This is a far contrast from the total cost of all collisions at 871 billion dollars. Most of these collisions are due to drunk driving, speeding, and distracted driving. With numbers that staggering, how can a human even justify getting a driver's license? And pigs are the ones making the roads unsafe? The concept is simply a false dichotomy. Either we're shooting pigs, or our roads are unsafe. How about we look at some other alternatives, like a safe road system? 
putting up better fencing in areas where there's frequent collisions? How about building a wildlife bridge so that they can cross the, the roadway safely? How about we have better education in those areas where there are lots of collisions with motorists to make sure they're looking out for pigs? I mean, our cars are pretty good nowadays. They have brakes and they have an accelerator. So if we teach motorists to use brakes and have their headlights on at nighttime, then we could start reducing the numbers of collisions with any wildlife, not just feral pigs. Harassment is another strategy that's used where it involves using loud noises, um, non-violent um, engagement with these pigs in certain areas to scare them away. So we could do that in our roadways, we could also do it near farmer's fields. Another argument that hunters are frequently using is that they're an ecological problem. They're destroying riverbanks, they're destroying farmers' fields. The number one cause of this ransacking of the environment is because pigs are rooting. They're trying to cool down, they're also trying to search for food. They're trying to survive, so they root. So one of my questions to hunters is if you saw a pig rooting in the near the riverbank, and on the opposite side of the river you saw a bulldozer bulldozing up down a bunch of, of uh, forest and trees. Which you think of the two would be more of a damaging environmentally? What if I were to say that the pig rooting was to search for food for its survival, whereas that bulldozer was knocking over the trees just simply to build a pig farm so that he could make money? And just to put this in comparison, every single year in the US, they slaughter 118 million pigs which is 23 times the population of wild pigs. Even if you're not taking into consideration all the other livestock, all the other animals, how much food, grain, and water are those pigs in captivity being fed? And the wild pigs are the issue? There are 8 billion humans also on Earth that are currently destroying the environment. And we're going to point out what five million pigs are doing in the US. So concentrated animal feeding operations, CAFOs, are currently operating across all of the US and the world. Factory farms. They have a way higher uh, environmental impact than a bunch of pigs in the, in the wild. They cause ocean dead zones, they have runoff which is known to affect locals living in the area, they've caused massive amounts of greenhouse gases. It is a complete double standard by hunters to believe that CAFOs are totally fine operating across the country, but these pigs are the true issue to the environment. And also ironically, those crops that farmers are trying to protect from wild pigs are in turn selling that feed to pig farms. It looks like they're eating crops in our general direction. One hunter claimed that if he didn't hunt, then a hundred species a year would go extinct. There is no data to suggest hunters shooting wild pigs will prevent the extinction of species. What the data actually says is that pigs currently threaten 140 species. According to a report published by the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, Humans are the number one cause of species extinction. Pigs were thrown in together with dogs and red foxes, mongoose, and are all implicated in approximately nine total extinctions. The number one threat to biodiversity is animal agriculture, with invasive species coming at number five. Even aerial gunning of wild pigs is not a solution. It has been legalized in Texas but it's not a very good strategy. Wild pigs have learned to associate the sound of the helicopter blades with threats, so they take cover and hide. Do you think that helicopters run for free? Or ammunition is free? They're spending thousands of dollars an hour just to operate these helicopters. So instead of using violent methods on a regular routine basis, how about you do a one-time payment and put some fencing around your property? But farmers fields though, what are you talking about? I need you to go, go, go. The reason that less violent solutions have not been given consideration is because wild pig meat and sport has become a booming industry. Hunters have purposely spread wild pigs in, into the wild wilderness and then hunt them for profit. Trapping wild pigs is effective in the short term, but only useful on small scale and not practical in areas with natural food nearby. Poisoning is not a humane solution and it has also targeted other species as well as not being legal near certain populations. The most humane solution that is being worked on right now, in my opinion, 
is pig birth control being delivered through species specific breeders. In the short term, farmers could be protecting their crops better with electric fencing. And the first thing that our uh, hunters are gonna say is, oh, well, I can't afford fencing. I mean, that's gonna be way too expensive. I mean, how are we supposed to do that? We have so many croplands. Well, they could do strategic fencing. And not only that, but how about we start dedicating all of these agricultural subsidies away from, diverting them away from the dairy industry and from the meat industry and giving them to farmers to help protect their fields. I mean, the dairy industry is useless. So why don't we take uh, almost all that money away from the dairy industry? And it's about $22 billion that the US government gives to the dairy industry in subsidies. So that's a lot of money. So in closing, feral pigs, they're just trying to exist. If vegans were in charge of the world and there was a lot more of us, you would see that there would be a vegan solution to dealing with feral pigs and reducing the population humanely and through birth control and also through fencing, through other harassment techniques to stay, have them stay away from uh, protected crops and protected riverbanks. So we can coexist. We are able to coexist with 315 other million Americans and 32 million or so in Canada. Better laws prohibiting people from transporting the pigs from state to state will also reduce the numbers as well. When there's a will, there's a way. If non-vegans are unable to solve this issue, then vegans will. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button so you don't miss a video. Thanks so much. Don't tell me you believe that. Aren't you just gonna take that? Or will you fight back?